<laughs> basically, <laughs> I, had, I had friends from London come out to visit me in like East Grinstead one time, and they like one of the first things that they said was like, "Oh my gosh, the the air is so fresh out here. I feel like I can breathe. <laughs> like, is it like this all the time?" And I'm like, "Yeah. Like, <laughs> imagine a world without like so much pollution, pollution and yeah. smog." Like you don't realize how bad it is till you get out and you're like, wow, I can take like a full breath and like not feel like I'm going to like just have a coughing fit afterwards. Literally, when you go out for just walk along the road and you're like, I'm not going to breathe because it's just you can just the, the yeah. fumes, you know, it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> you feel like like you just need like a shower afterwards. You're like, I haven't done anything. Yeah. I feel like dirty. <laughs> or you blow your nose. No, this is gross. But you blow your nose and you're like, oh, my God. Like, it's just every, it's just kind of like when my family come up, they're like, why is my, I blow my nose and it's black. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Mm, that's just, that's just London. So. And you're just like, people just assume you're just some kind of like Oliver Twist chimney sweep. And you're like, no, I've just been in, in London. I just walked, oh <laughs> yeah, I just walked around London the block of months. <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. But we love it, don't we? It's kind of a love-hate relationship. <laughs> it is. Every time I talk to like, like meet someone in London I'm like oh how long have you been in London for and they're like well I was meant to stay for one year and I've been here 20 years now (laughs) (laughs) yeah Yeah. how do people stay for so long I don't know I think it just it just sucks you in doesn't it it's the the excitement of uh, excitement of the place um Mm -hmm. you know you get and it is that thing of I guess the excitement where people get like drawn in and uh Mm -hmm. uh, and it's also that thing of like once you do it's like any other place once you do put your roots down yeah you know and you have your things that you like to go to I get why the countryside can then look boring you know Mm -hmm. and like any other place then you're just like oh I'm gonna have to start over and yeah try to put those roots down again which is which is always Especially difficult. Especially for artists, right? That's really difficult. Oh my gosh, so much. Because yeah. you, you do, you build your network somewhere. And it's mm. possible to go anywhere and do that. But, you know, there's something about starting from scratch that's just really daunting, you know, mm. and not having the help and not having, obviously in London, it's like you can build that pretty quickly, you know, yep. if you go to the right places. And um, whereas other places you actively have to search like you said in your you know the town that you grew up you know that would be really hard you probably have to set it up yourself maybe you know mm. and then there's a different ask yeah, yeah that, that thing was, yeah where you're like looking under rocks to find other dances <laughs> <laughs> artists <laughs> <are you? laughs> hello <laughs> is anyone there <laughs> Uh, yeah that's how it feels a little bit sometimes um and it is I, I don't know about you but I found there was such a stark contrast between um like when we were training when we were training you're you're in this tight it is a little bit like kind of more like company life where mm. you're in this tight bubble um it's so intense and it's a really bonding experience you know and I only trained like you know formally for a year did like that year at Laban and but during that time like you know became so close to the people who I was training with but then you leave and then it becomes really nomadic um um and it can and honestly lonely at times because Mm -hmm. you kind of bounce can bounce from project to project and you get a similar kind of vibe where you do one project maybe you're on it for a few weeks or a month and you're you working intensely you become close you're like a family you know you're often living together as well as working together Mm -hmm. and and then you're and then you're just like you know just all go your separate ways um and yeah so i and that was that was part of i think the the motivation as well like us moving to guilford was Mm -hmm. to find something where i was like okay i need just like a local base it doesn't even need to be like professional dancers, just dancers mm-hmm. who I'm plugged into, who I like have that dance community that just like keep the keep the buzz, keep the fire alive for me, keep me yeah. excited about dancing, keep me excited about moving. Mm-hmm. Um, because I, th- I think it's one of the things that wasn't really talked about in training, but is actually really crucial is actually understanding 
uh, your psychological needs when having longevity mm. in a career. You know, we mm. talk all about like, you know, maintaining the, the physical side of it. Um, you know, you know, what do you do when you don't have access to a studio 24 seven anymore? You know, how do you maintain your fitness? Um, but, but also we don't talk about like, Hey, you're all these uh, like really big resources and social structures that you had are mm. going to be at least partially removed or not as consistent. How are you going to build up the, the kind of mental support and psychological yeah. and social support that you're going to need? And not just in like a networking way, but in a genuine, like helping you hustle and helping you mm. feel like this is like an, an your, your art life is an, uh, is an enjoyable and loving part of your life. Mm to actually make it sustainable. And it's something I haven't heard anyone like talk about once, but, but I've talked to loads of dancers who, who feel lonely or, you know, often they're living in a city like London and they're not from London, you know, they're from some yeah. small edit, like village in Italy, Italy. And, yeah. um, you know, they've had to build like a life here too. So it's also mm. like compacted with also just the immigrant experience as well. Mm. So it's, it's these kind of like interesting layers, like, yeah. There's so much there. There's so much there because also I, I don't know about you, but sometimes if I meet somebody new, then I'm like, oh, I don't know quite how to really interact with you unless I'm in a studio. Like that's my place, you know, like yeah. if we're in a studio, we can jam together, you know, the walls come down where, you know, we can chat, we can get to deeper levels, but it's kind of more organic for me. Whereas you know, outside of the studio, sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't know how, <laughs> if I'm not a dancer, <laughs> if we're not moving, yeah. then sometimes that's really um, hard as well. And I think it's a vital part of, um, you know, post training is finding that support system. And like you said, some, sometimes mm -hmm. I crave, I look at friends who are not in the arts and mm -hmm. have, I don't crave their jobs that when it's completely office based, but sometimes the bonds that they have with yeah. people in the office, they go in, you know, it's, they're there, you know, it, there's laughs, they go through life together. Hmm. And I think like, and after work drinks, I'm like, oh, it's like, we have them, but they're very, you know, here, there and everywhere. Yeah. And it's not a regular thing for us. And it's, um, sometimes it's hard, right? Hmm. It is like just a little bit, the grass is always greener, isn't it? Because yeah, I've had that yeah, back and so forth good. with, uh, you know, other friends who have those really, you know, high end, you know, London um, city jobs and that are really consistent nine to five. And, you mm -hmm. know, they're like, David, it's like, you inspire me so much. It's so amazing that you're like yeah. out here doing your dreams. And I'm just like, yeah, well, it, you know, the pay isn't so inspiring. You know, and like the inconsistency of it and all of that. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, yeah, but you know, at least you're doing it. And I, yeah. I, I, I think that's a part of it. You know, there, there mm -hmm. is some courage, I think that comes with, that just comes with the, uh, the territory where, it's it's amazing actually how many people just won't give it a go and don't get mm. me wrong like I'm definitely an opportunist I'm opportunist I'm not really an optimist like I don't mm. think everything will work out but I think you take the mm. opportunities that are in front of you and present yeah. themselves and you see what see what happens you know because yeah. I think the way my life has turned out like I just never could have expected it to turn out this way mm. so I think you kind of just make the know what you want but then also just make the best of the opportunities that are in, in kind of in front of you but mm -hmm. I think a vast majority of people don't don't try um mm -hmm. and I think and most people drop out of dance ultimately because they just count themselves out because yeah. they just go like you know oh I'm not good enough oh I'm not da -da, not this not that you mm -hmm. know in in a way uh, you know, as if those things mattered, you know? Mm. Um, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's in, in kind of to some degree, like, uh, yeah, I'm really inspired by those artists who just aren't held back by those things in a way that are mm. just like, I need to make work. I need to make art. I'm going to make art, um, you know, and that kind of like compulsive side of art where it's, it's like this, this just needs to come out of me and, 
Mm. You know, and I think it was, I don't know who it was. Was it Pina Bausch who talked about this? Um, possibly. It would be a good attribution either way. Um, <laughs> about, I think it was about criticism and saying, you know, it's not up to you to worry about how the work is received. Like your responsibility mm. as an artist is to just make the work. Mm. you know yeah. and so just just do the work like don't yeah. don't worry about you know like you know what the work is mm. like, go make it yeah um, 100% and this yeah. is another thing with training sometimes is like I completely agree with that I think you've got to make the work you've got to put it out there how it's received is another thing but if you're constantly responding to the feedback or how it's seen and that influences your artistic work then then you can really get kind of oh I don't quite you mm. know everything gets a bit intangible if you stay true to like you said when something comes and it really comes to you when you feel it and you want to take it and, and bring it out um into kind of physical sense um you've got to do that but I think in training sometimes you know I, I question sometimes with with grades and with you have to hit this you have to hit that sometimes that can really kind of um, play with your confidence. It can play with your artistic expression. And then sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, for them artists that I see in training that were real like artists and now are not involved in dance. And sometimes they wouldn't do so well, but I'm like, ah, oh, but you really had something, you know, when it's mm -hmm. like, is <clears throat> what, what kind of, where did you lose your confidence? Because God, that could have been amazing if you just carried on making work or carried on moving. Um, but sometimes people don't tell you that, right? It's like, oh, there you are. You mm. had a two one, or you had a two two. Like and that's it. Yeah. And it's like, ah, oh, pour so much of your heart into it. Sometimes I know. And it's just I remember at the start, like with um, uh, I did a learning project with the Royal Opera House and Carrie Nichols, who you know is mm. just like amazing. Um, you know, and at, at the time I, I was, I was 19, I was the youngest choreographer on the project and uh, I didn't have any formal dance training like at that, at that point, um, you know, I was like a really proficient break dancer in salsa row, but I, the contemporary dance world was a really new world for me at that point. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Carrie gave me like a really good pep talk as she always does as yeah. she can give anyone <laughs> yeah, and you know talking is. about that what at the time you know I, I really did feel the skills gap and I was mm -hmm. like st really struggling with that um though I did have all this like kind of artistic training because I had like a, an I was doing like an arts degree so I had that kind of like that mindset going into it mm -hmm. and she was like you know I uh, she's like I know someone else who you know couldn't who couldn't do uh, double pirouettes for the longest time and his his name is Wayne McGregor like <laughs> you know and he turned out okay <laughs> so, so she, she was kind of like don't don't let where you're at as a dancer influence where you're at mm. as like a choreographer because mm. she's like your ideas are good they're original we haven't heard them before so mm. you know you might need to find a different way to get them on your dancers but but just do it you know um, yeah mm yeah completely <laughs> I love that just way more great mm, okay thanks Gary <laughs> okay yeah. I wish, aim high I, aim high I honestly wish everyone could have a Carrie just like pep talk at some point in their lives <laughs> I mean it's available right she's doing loads of stuff now with yeah. the coaching so um I mean shout out to Carrie she's uh yeah I'll uh, yeah I'll pop her ready. her like her website and stuff in the description below because it's um yeah, because she's just honest, honestly the best and really, really cares about people and is also just really, really perceptive. Um, I think mm -hmm. when most people give advice, like one of the things is it's timing. People are, mm -hmm. like good advice at the wrong time is bad advice, you yeah. know, and uh, I, I think the best thing about her is that she only tells you the, the just right amount of advice that you need to hear at that point to get mm. just to take one more step forward mm. she's not going to give yeah. you the advice you need to take two steps just one step um and i think sometimes often when people are giving advice they're not actually thinking about how that advice will feed into um, a dancer or a artist an artist progression mm. they're just like let me just throw advice out 
because it feels mm. good to give advice um yeah. and rather than going just like what does this person actually need to hear mm. and what will actually help them mm. you know and she kind of does like you know that mixture of like pep talk and also like Jesus thing of just like providing a qu- question instead of an answer <laughs> yeah. just like ask the question and then as you ask the question yourself like you just come to the answer yourself but then mm. that's so much more important because then you have ownership over the answer that you yes. gave yeah um, yeah yeah 100 percent. it's kind of that thing of like not to and you've got to be careful a moment because I mean, mm-hmm. it is a place where loads of coaches are coming into the scene and that's amazing but yeah 100 percent. i agree you know wrong timing sometimes and also just trying to fix the problem doesn't help you know or just do yeah. this and it's like oh <laughs> that is not um you want to feel always actually help you learn. yeah 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 it's great it's great to have um to have worked with her and and be in the studio that was the most special kind of time with Kerry is to be in the studio um and get all of them nuggets of information when you sit down with her but also when you move with her you know she makes you move in a way that no other person has so um god she's a she's a special lady <laughs> <laughs> uh she's the best let me um yeah introduce you to the audience um and then we'll like jump back in um i'll just talk to the audience directly hello lovely dancers and welcome to david's dance podcast i'm your host david evans we have an amazing creative with us today. She's a choreographer, producer, dancer, teacher, working across multiple aspects of the industry. Um, um, I asked to have her on after uh, watching one of her recent uh, film works um, and uh, just getting really excited about it. I think one of the things that is so fantastic about her work is that it really puts the people back into to dance. I, I see a lot of um dance work where I see dancers on stage but when I see her work I see really people on stage and I think her her work works really well as sort of almost forms not forms of portraiture in a way and it's really lovely to see dance work that is is in many ways seeing people dance and I I think that's so beautiful and so I'm really excited that we get to have her on today and um I'd like to welcome to the podcast Emily Robinson Emily welcome Thank you. Oh my gosh, what an intro. (laughs) I've always wondered sometimes when listening to podcasts, like, what would my intro be? (laughs) I was like, wow. Now you know. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Thank you for having me. No worries. Yeah. Thank you so much, so much for joining. Um, Yeah, I know it's like a little bit of a crazy time and kind of before we like jumped on, we were, yeah, just talking a bit about the kind of the hecticness of it all and kind of adjusting and adjusting in a way to all the all the changes that like you know the c word covid has uh brought (laughs) has has, has brought (laughs) has brought about um i'd um really like to actually jump into kind of talking about seedlings of time actually so you've uh you did this, so this was a, you, you actually you introduced it. You tell us w- what it is um, <laughs> and just a little bit about it. Sure. Um, so back in March, um, I was actually away in India on a residency, go a dance residency. Oh, and awesome. obviously COVID kind of hit. And I was in this really kind of in-depth um, exploration with amazing people. And I came... I had to come back um, and I chose to come back uh, early and I came straight back to Wales. Well, so I was in London at the time when I left and it was this kind of, okay, so we're going to be locked down probably. So I'll come back to Wales because I feel more at home here and um, spend some time with the family. Anyway, I got here and after spending kind of every day dancing with um, people and investigating I was like oh my god what am I gonna do and I I just kind Mm. of every day it was amazing weather and I'd watch my dad go outside and he had his kind of ritual with he was off work and and 
uh, my mum was still caring and going out and doing her thing and was kind of on the front line there. Mm-hmm. So my dad would go out every morning and do his thing. And I was kind of watching him out there and wanting to join him. And every now and again, I would when I'd come home, but not kind of on the regular. And so I had this idea of kind of making something together. Um, My dad loves to dance. He's not a dancer by Mm. any means. Um, But anyway, I I seen a, um, like a funded project opportunity with groundwork pro from uh, from cardiff Mm -hmm. and i applied for it and i kind of told myself if i get it i'll do it but even if i don't get it like we'll do it you know Mm -hmm. so i you know i don't i don't have anything i really just wanted to do it but anyway i got the email um saying i had it and i went down to see my dad and my dad like his first response was like oh my god are we going to be on like the tv and i'm like (laughs) oh no no okay lower your expectations no it's not like that at all um and basically what happened was we'd go out I'd set my camera up I'd never really filmed anything properly before apart from little you know rehearsals and stuff Mm. I'd I'd just prop my camera up and I'm like let's just forget about it and we'd start the day usually with him like okay what do we need to do in the garden today and um it's different things every day and different kind of choreography in terms of what we were doing with the gardening every day and then we'd have a conversation about it um why he was doing it anything that came up and then you know we just think okay well how can we translate this into a bit of movement and we'd stay in the garden and just spend a couple of hours then um seeing how we can keep that kind of flow going and take it into something more focused on each other rather than like the plants um but the same sort of sensitivity and we did that for a month so in and out of the garden every month and thank god the weather was amazing yeah. um and for those who like i think yeah the choreographic process is like always so interesting and i think one of the toughest things mm-hmm. i think especially when you're starting as a choreographer and everyone does this differently is moving from inspiration to movement, mm. um, you know, and actually understanding when you are inspired by something, how do you translate that inspiration to to movement? How is it interpreted? So how did you do that? How did you um, move from, uh, you know, your dad's gardening to actually going, hey, let's move this way, you know? Um, mm. What yeah. was that? I think it was... Um, one, it wasn't on the aesthetic, you know, I didn't have a goal on how it was going to look mm-hmm. really helped this process because, you know, describing to a, like a non-dancer, um, that wouldn't have worked with my dad. And at certain times I forgot that and we just wanted to dive into movement and he was kind of like, Oh, I just feel him like, mm, I'm not sure. I don't feel comfortable kind of thing. So there was a lot to think about with this one with my dad, but in terms of like inspiration to movement, I think as the days went on, we just started to play a lot. Um, as we were gardening, for example, one of the days um, we were, he was speaking about kind of touching the plants that were like grazing kind of the plants um, in the greenhouse mm. um, because it strengthens their stems. And then when they go out, the wind kind of blow in, they're stronger. Mm. So this was like, oh, my God, wow, (laughs) let's go. Yeah, and it was so, I mean, it was quite an easy process because it was, in the film, I speak about really wanting to care, the same consideration and care that we were giving the plants to each other. Um, So, for example, with that touch, it was like, okay, like, we're hungry, right? Our skin is hungry right now um, from, you know, uh, skin hunger, right, is like a, a term at the moment. So we just kind of like connected with touch and we've seen how, okay, I'm not going to completely respond. Um, and then how do I respond to touch? And how is that, how does that feel as father and daughter actually to connect, you know, as man and as woman um, in a completely kind of innocent and um, sensitive way. And that was kind of one of the days and that was it, you know, just touch, just connection. Um, and some beautiful movement came which organically I started to thread in some contact work and you know let's try this can you lean your weight into me Um, 
let me find a ledge that you can pour your weight into. Can I, you know, really feel the sense of groundedness? So it was just questions and play. And, you know, obviously the film captures some of the beautiful moments. But there were some hilarious moments where really I was like, oh, gosh, that was just not good at all. Like that day, like I'm like scraping through the material. Like what is there to take through to the, you know, um, and my dad just kind of just wanted to just kind of dance like this. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's a bit different from what I was thinking <laughs> would come. Um, uh, so, yeah, it was just a lot of play with this one, a bit different to what I'd usually do with my mm. inner studio. Actually, I, I keep on playing in, in a studio, but we allowed ourselves a lot of time to okay. really like strip it back and layer it up mm. here. And um, and by doing it every day was a gift, you know? Yeah. Because and in many ways, that's like so important because it's just like, like any other, you know, dance process, like you need time to build up that trust and build up that rapport you know and whether you're you know strangers moving in a studio for the first time but you know you talked about it like for your dad like he's not really used to moving you not, you know you, you as father and daughter might not be used to this kind of um like way of exploring your like relationship and mm. um and so there is an element of like trust that comes with it um and it does take time you know like I think there's that thing as well, like as a choreographer where you got to kind of like ease people. <laughs> like sometimes it depends on the dancers I'm working with, but sometimes if I, if I know I'm going to ask the dancers to do things that are really out there and kind mm. of crazy, I can't ask them to do that first or they're mm. going to get like embarrassed. I got to kind of like slowly get them there and then they just find themselves doing that thing yeah. You know, so you got to create the trust, get people doing things, exercises together. And mm. so that by the time you're doing that, whatever crazy thing that if someone just asked you like explicitly, hey, will you, you know, jump around and cluck like a chicken that, that people <laughs> just go like, no. But if you slowly <laughs> got there like, and you're all just suddenly kind of doing it, there's mm. ways of doing it where you can create a social cohesion where yeah. people have a kind of safe social space you know and i think a lot of it's doing it gradually doing things together and 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 in some ways sometimes talking using a mixture of talking and not talking talking to just explain a structure so people understand enough of what you're doing and then not mm. talking so people can't communicate their embarrassment like mm. one of the interesting things is like especially working like with teenagers as i try to mm not like just get them going and not get them talking to, or looking yeah. at each other too much because when people look at each other and they stop to talk they try to mm. communicate their embarrassment but if they mm. don't do that and everyone else is doing the same thing they actually just assume the situation's okay so they're yeah. much more willing to do things that are out there that they would just never have the confidence to do and they're not embarrassed because they can't communicate their embarrassment so the embarrassment never registers and never lands anywhere so yeah. they just find themselves in the shared experience and you kind of you kind of mm. get there like socially and artistically mm. um I think it's yeah. really interesting it's like this the the trust that was really present in in the piece and the, uh, I think the core the choreographic device just to hone in I think was 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 touch it was like about mm. touch with the environment and plants and then and then how that would work with with you both exploring your touch with the environment and with each other and with the sunlight, you know, and casting your shadows, um, mm. those kind of aspects. So it was like, okay, cool. Like touch is kind of the, the way in. I thought the, yeah, that, fa that father daughter thing was, it was really beautiful to see that kind of uh, familial intimacy actually. Um, mm. I, I know it varies a lot family to family. Different families yeah. have different expressions of like how like, you know, tactile they are with each other and also how like codified that is, right? You know, some families are really tactile, but in a codified way, you know, like you mm. give them each other a hug when you see each other. But there wouldn't be that looseness of just like coming up beside someone and just like giving them a cuddle or... Mm you know the kind of almost more like free form 
kind of touch that you see in dance or or that dancers yeah. sometimes use um, or like younger years as well right like in your younger years you can right there's well it depends yeah the family to family and this is something that really opened up in conversations with others was some people were like oh gosh that really are connected to to me on so many levels for people who lost their father or mm. are a father themselves and um but then you know for me personally you go through I went through that process of being able to come downstairs when I was younger and just kind of cuddle up to my dad whereas now it's like we're very separate you know apart from this project this is what's really interesting is that we're not particularly touchy at all mm. like after that project ended when we'd go back into the house it'd be like okay you know we're not gonna <laughs> it's like <laughs> we're back to this really strange like can we now just yeah. like connect um and we haven't much you know we have a we have a stronger bond but touch wise like we're still now this kind of like I'm this woman now and we don't we don't just kind of hug or cut and you know this Welsh mm. cut kind of idea um yeah so that was what really is, was interesting and I also had a conversation with somebody else um kind of mentoring little chat with somebody and she was like I'd need a therapist in the room if I was going to do that with my dad like there's just no chance you know <laughs> like we'd really like butt heads um in like to be in the same room mm. so it's really opened up many conversations and I think that's why I was really sensitive afterwards um was like I totally understand that this was something quite precious in my relationship and I thank people for watching it because it's we let we I, me and my dad were, were comfortable with letting people into our world kind of thing mm. and we knew what that would mean to people because obviously everyone has that kind of relationship whatever that form is um but also real sensitivity to um how that differs from person to person you know mm. but that's but something that's quite special it is, you have to yeah. you are reacting either way you know you have to have some sort of response to that but it is one of the just wonderful things about partner dance is that partner dancers do create a social structure that helps make like you know exploring touch with other people like s s relatively safe mm. you know compared with kind of because you you know like it's it's different but like if I go and do like salsa for instance mm. like I know that you know I go up and ask someone to dance or they can come up and ask me to dance and I'll mm -hmm. say yes and we know the language that's in the dance so if that you know touch language isn't a part of the dance we know okay that's that's not appropriate you know and and also th those touch languages that, that that wouldn't be necessarily appropriate if I just went up and just did that without the con social context of like hey we're doing salsa the salsa music playing like all yeah. of those things you know because it's like mm -hmm. You know, for instance, like, you know, as like a married person, like mm. there's ways in which like I would dance with someone doing kazumba, bachata or salsa that I would wouldn't do even like 5% of with like mm. someone in like a nightclub, for instance, yeah. because, you know, if I go out and dance like, you know, like uh, bachata or whatever, you know, and it's like a really sexy, sensual dance, but there's mm. an end to the dance and there's a really clear like really clear boundaries yeah. you know and everyone understands like hey this is just a dance like mm. you know and and it ends and if you and if people do want to have like something romantic out of it then you you, you say hey you do you want to go for a drink after or whatever mm. you know yeah, and people yeah. do do that but like yeah. there's a there is a clear structure of like you dance with someone for a song and then mm. and then like and then that kind of thing like it ends yeah you know whereas if if I was to dance with like someone like that in like a nightclub, there's no clear rules. There's no structure. There's no Literally. like, hey, this 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 is a part of this kind of touch movement language, but this isn't. So so it's yeah. just it's too open. So there's no mm. kind of safety there, um, yeah. you know. And uh, but it is interesting. Like I remember the first time, one of the first times doing contact improvisation, mm. and like. And the weirdness of like meeting someone for the first time, like yeah. us rolling our bodies like <laughs> over each other. And then at the end, yeah. like sitting up, separating, sitting up and like shaking their hand. <laughs> yeah. Like it was like, like we were business colleagues yeah. meeting for the first time. 
yeah, and it's it like was it's ended now it's yeah like and i felt that i felt that shift from like one social context that the dance had created with its own rules and like codes to like back to like the british like codes of like oh <laughs> you're a stranger i'm meeting you for the first time yeah the only appropriate amount of touch right now is like to shake hands yeah. like um and, and not biz- even that right now <laughs> yeah and the bizarreness of that and a little bit because of that sometimes I would try to stay in it when mm. like just stay with the person in contact mm. when we would have that initial conversation afterwards mm. just because it felt like too yeah. sharp a break to mm. do all of that and then just go back to something so formal just yeah, made so. it feel like oh awkward or like oh we've suddenly lost that connection and that rapport that we built it's so um, beautiful contact is so beautiful i remember once in um a friend took me to israel and we went to a contact jam mm. and and we were just just doing a few kind of exercises to get us in and and then we said we just kind of it just opened um into the jam and then this guy came in there wasn't many of us in the place and we just kind of danced together for ages. And it's this thing of like, there was no introduction. I don't know this guy. I don't know where he's from. I don't know his name. And we're just completely just kind of just two bodies rolling. <laughs> and if anybody was watching, you know, it is like, and sometimes you catch yourself, right? Like, oh, this is, you know, I'm really kind of acting personal in this guy's space. Hmm. Um, but there's something really beautiful about like stripping it back. Why do we have to, especially male and female sometimes right is this thing of like I understand like as a married man like totally like you have got to be careful right but or even if you have a partner but it's if it's coming from a really kind of um innocent and open space like being contact and in salsa I can imagine certain contexts um I think it's something that many people should experience because it's a connection that you won't get very often you can't get to that level once you're in a relationship sometimes you feel I don't know is there guilt I don't know like to get to that place and there's nothing wrong with really connecting with people on a deep, deeper level in a physical sense um and yeah that's what's really special I find in in going to places like this and I mean I don't know salsa wise but I've been to salsa with my partner um but in contact especially right Mm. yeah it's kind of like just re-establishing I think a healthy relationship with trust and yeah yeah understanding yeah yeah sort of getting away from I think this kind of demonization of trust that I think Mm. a little bit some of the difficulty about the climate currently especially you know saying sorts of things like you know in like educational context or things like this oh you know we're gonna have like no touch with children or things and and I'm like oh, I'm not I'm not sure yeah. I'm like don't get me wrong we need safeguarding but I'm like I'm not really sure that's the answer because mm. what you're teaching children is that all touch is bad yeah is that all touch is like forbidden and and now they're and now they're unable to distinguish between what is good touch and what is bad touch you know because yeah. yeah. we're just I'm telling them that it's it. Yeah, because we're just telling them that it's it's all bad, you know, and kids do, yeah. you know, I've been at schools and like, you know, I would never intentionally just be like, oh, hey, like, you know, I know the safeguarding, I'm not going to go up mm. and uh, like, you know, hug the kids or whatever, but they do, we'll just run up and just hug your leg. Yeah. And you're not going to just be like, get off me. <laughs> I know. But sometimes your head is like, oh, <laughs> like, you don't yeah. like me. Because it's all, like, even for ourselves. And it's, it's just really quite sad, right? Like, um, in a dance perspective as well, um, when that's their initial response, we shouldn't be teaching them like, "Oh, that is wrong." Like you can't, um, you can't connect. Mm. Uh, and it's yeah, I agree. I think it's a really sensitive place right now with safeguarding, and um, rightfully so. Conversations need to be had, but um, but also it's not to strike fear into what that can be. Yeah. Um, like, I think we need more discernment around touch. I don't think we mm. just need no touch because mm. that's just, it's just too hard. And, you know, and then people feel, feel, feel lonely because that, that you're missing that tactile connection with like your fellow 
with your fellow human beings you know yeah it'll be an interesting conversation like after this you know after we come out of this kind of stage of really not you know not connecting and how that is I mean I don't even know for myself you know to be in the studio and to be doing anything like contact or even to be back in a choreographic process and mm. um, I think that will take a lot of time to really build up that or maybe not maybe it's like riding the bike right you get back on the bike and it's just kind of we're back in yeah. um but with spending too much time apart and with kind of um, the way things are again it's the fear around it how do we build that back up in dance you know um yeah mm. be a special a special period kind of relearning um and going through that process again of, of trust with people yeah there's a yeah i think sometimes a little bit of crunchiness or shaking the rust off in a way yeah. <laughs> that can kind I of can't wait uh yeah i absolutely can't wait either um so with it's interesting with seedlings of time you know of all the people to create like a dance project with i understand there was the practical constraints as well um you know uh why was it uh, your dad in particular that you chose to create this duet with Hmm. I, I mean, I mentioned it briefly in the film, but he's, I've always wanted to connect with him in a dance perspective. Hmm. Um, why? Like, there's history there. I think we'd go into parties and we'd, we'd be the ones kind of dressing up together and putting on a little bit of a show, you know, like, so he opened that relationship really early on as a bit of a showman you know um and so I knew that he had that level of confidence to try something different really open-minded man and um also really caring to and, and and kind of open to listening and just kind of engaging with something I think he's really curious as a, as a man himself mm. um and also I think from a choreographer's point of view he like just has some I don't know maybe I'm biased but I feel like and it wasn't really I think in the film it's not um I'm not giving him the credit but he has a real presence some somewhat like um as a mover he and maybe I'll do something else with him hopefully I will but he's like a dancer that I would have picked out if he was in a room and that little mm. something that's like, ah, oh, it's just, I don't know, I connect with him. If I watch him and I'm kind of trying to get something out of a mover or a person in a choreographic sense, he kind of offers that. Um, and yeah, I, I think I was very lucky that he was, we were in this situation and I could do that because I think if I look around, I mean, I love my family, of course, but I don't think not many people have that kind of little something that um, you feel like you can work with sometimes. I mean, everyone has potential, right? But some mm-hmm. people more than others have just that little something extra. Um, and he really, he really kind of, um, he was interesting to me as a, as a body. And um, so, yeah. It was nice, you know. I think it was that, nice that, that idea of presence is always really interesting because, yeah, there's, the, yeah, there's dancers who aren't necessarily the most technical, but they have, like, amazing stage presence. And it's really difficult mm. to, like, put a finger on what gives someone incredible stage presence in, like, and it's often something that, yeah, you can just feel. I think a lot of it is maybe to do with like comfort kind of on stage and comfort being in your own skin mm, and yeah. also kind of attitude as well. I think attitude about what you're offering and um, mm. and I think ownership of the movement as well. Mm. And I think a lot of it's that when you see someone come into a space like and really own something, it can be... It can be, re- yeah, really, really beautiful. You know, one of the 
the films that was also um, curated alongside yours um, it was a film called Strings by Barrowland Ballet. Um, and they were dancing in the string installation and uh, installation of all these kind of intersecting kind of strings. And it was professional dancers dancing with um, children with uh, autism um, and, you know, different kind of um, uh, learning and developmental needs. Um, mm. And it was really beautiful in, in a way, like seeing their um kind of yeah their 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 presence their um their their attention their their attitude which is just so so wonderful you know because uh, one of the things with like the kind of autistic brain is that it's very um focused on detail but also because of that it's really easy for to be like for an autistic person to like feel overwhelmed if there's like lots of different sensory things going on. Um, so sometimes it can be like a real like sense to kind of hone in on one thing. And it was really beautiful to like see these kids and like the dancers work with them, just like play with their environment in a really like attention, really like detailed kind of way. Um, and I kind of thought about it and I'm like, you know, the, the kind of presence that these kids have is it's actually really difficult to achieve as a uh as like a like you know neuronormative um performer is is is, mm -hmm. is actually having that kind of level of kind of commitment to the detail and the task of what you're doing isn't is actually it's not that easy um mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, I think presence is an interesting one. And I think with, with your, your dad, I definitely saw that in the film where the, that openness, um, and he holds his own space really well with mm. like kind of like, you know, confidence. And I think because of that, I think it works. It works really well. Um, another thing that I quite enjoyed about the piece was the diaristic nature of it. The fact that um, it's really, it, it is a piece about a process and um and in many ways the process kind of is the piece um you know it's not as you said like you know it being not just like kind of aesthetic and it not being about the the end visual product that you get it's understanding the process and then recording that process is kind of what makes it beautiful and you know for a lot of people watching it it's kind of about them reflecting i think on that journey um of their relationship with their parents and you know what that what that looks like what those interactions are like you know the context in which we find ourselves interacting with our parents um and mm. sort of how, how that is and I, I thought the kind of yeah journalistic way of exploring that was was actually exactly right to not present something that felt like uh, a self-contained um you know aesthetic aesthetically driven film yeah. um was that like an intentional choice or do you think was that was something that you just kind of sort of arrived at as the the process went on yeah I think it's something that I, we arrived at and I think it's almost like um if I was in a choreographic process it would be kind of just filming bits of the rehearsal you know like even though we weren't we weren't working towards a piece but so often, as you know, like you're in the rehearsal process and there's so many nuggets that if you don't film, like sometimes you lose in the way um, and things when they get done over and over, they lose their spark sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. And it was just the way, I mean, it was, it's interesting for me and I think it's something that I'll take forward is capturing the process um, because it's kind of that idea of, before we, um, before, for example, if I was to do like a, a film project and maybe I'd record a little bit before and we're chatting and we're trying to find our way through. And then as soon as you click record, it's like, okay. Um, and you lose, yeah. you're like, okay, I need to be something else sometimes. And that's for me as well. And this was like, there is no start, there is no go it's just us and it just so happens that there's a camera there and I kind of have to be a bit mindful of um you know the filming 
part of where it's at and how the light affects it and whatnot. But other than that, it was purely processed, purely um, investigating our relationship and playing and gardening. That was it. Like there was no, I wasn't expecting anything more. Um, and actually in the process, I was like, I don't know, I, I, when I put it in the pitch, I was like, I don't know if I'll create a film. I was doing, which people can go to my Instagram um, at Emily Robinson Dance. Um, and they can see the process because every day I posted a little film of what we'd done that day, oh, which some would say like is more interesting. Um, one person did. <laughs> hmm. And at the in the process, I was like, I don't know if I create a film at the end. Like that's a lot of work, and you know, it's been a special thing, and I don't know if I want to do that. Hmm. And then I was like, No, actually, I do. Um, and it wasn't. It was just taking what we'd done in in the daily um, filming and kind of trying to find a place that felt right to kind of um plot them all together and mm. um, cut them all together and that was it like it was and and then I think it comes it, it looks quite clean maybe from what you can do with editing right but um it was all process and none of that was a for a final film and I think that speaks for itself a little bit with what mm. you're saying about you know we're not we're not we weren't aiming for that it just came um, which feels nice to me. And I think it's nice in any process that I go through is like in my piece that I did for resolution last year for Blinked. Mm. Um, all of it was a full female cast. And at the end, like the, the group was like one, you know, and they mm. really felt like they were moving together and that spoke for itself on the stage and off the stage. But afterwards I was like, I just feel an accomplishment to have got to this place where this group is one and the relationship is key and mm. we're humans and the interaction is just flowing. And and of course I want my choreography to speak um you know to, to relate and to be um something that is interesting. But sometimes I feel more of a like relief and more of an achievement if the relationship is there with whoever I've worked with, you know? Mm. I think um, that was really yeah. apparent in like um yeah, haven't seen the full thing of Blinked yet, but just even just watching the 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 trailers that you had available, like and it has to do with the way that it's been filmed as well, but that mm. it was really front and center, you know, and it kind of goes to this idea of what I was talking about of your work feeling like sort of putting people on stage and portraiture, is that I felt that I was really seeing um so I, I was seeing each of these like individual women mm. as individuals and then seeing them together you know and seeing mm. them move rather than just seeing you know dancers um mm -hmm. and and it's uh, yeah and it's and it's a really um it's a really lovely thing to see because i think it's important because it's why why we dance ultimately is you know we're humans you know mm. if you just watch like a robot do the same the same movements beautifully on stage it, mm. you know would it be dance like not really because mm. it's the human element that um is like so important and so like integral to it um yeah that that feeling like you know you talked about about arriving at that on the stage and off the stage eventually with your yeah, your dances of like being together and creating that bond. How do you do that? Like throughout your your process, is there like specific things where you're thinking about, you know, the icebreaker or the maybe the choreographic exercises you're going to start with, or or doing things? You know, sometimes you know I might do movement and then think, oh, actually, we need to find a way to be more together as we do this. So mm -hmm. we might need another exercise or another thing to help us bring get this more being together mm. you know or people or people might just need to be reminded of it you know or they might need to do it without music so that they just do it together or you know how, what was your way to finding that with with your cast for that piece I think it's always um the starting point for me and the starting conversations and choosing a theme that I feel like I can relate to um the, the two main work um 
the one that I can probably speak more to with this kind of um, with the topic that we're on is um, Leave Me One, which was about the imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. And like sitting down, I mean, not straight away, we move, we warm up, we're kind of, um, and we get the thrill of being in the studio together with dancers and get that buzz Mm -hmm. um, purely as movers with no kind of um, pressure for how that looks or anything. And then we start to, I start to move or set an improvisation task with how does this make you feel? This this aspect of you as a person, um, can we move across? We do like a streaming thing across the space. Just set an intention and we just move with it. And we're all kind of obviously responding to whatever that is. So in the imposter mm. syndrome, um, linked to our background, for example, our upbringing, do we feel like we relate to that? If we're from um, a working class or a middle class, like how does that make us feel, and how does that uh, influence us now with conversations with the way that that's influenced our us as beings and and the kind of um, the privilege that we have today or don't have, and we move a bit with that. I mean, that's like really quite deep to go into, but because we're just now minds, you know, like. It's, we don't have to speak about it, but I know that we're all in a sim- similar path of what we're investigating. And then um, and then we open it out to a circle. Like we sit down, we've explored it. And, and if people want to say something, they can. And usually if one person does, which they do, um, that even if it's a small something, people can, oh yeah, I also felt that, or actually I felt this. And and we get the conversation going and we find like a human point of connection of um in in the theme itself. And then as the process goes, we find exercises that relate to that and we'll go off and whatnot. But it's really kind of giving time to the dancers to speak to me and find a relation point to my theme. And um, mm-hmm. I brought, and I also put my kind of my perspective on on the um, on the table as we start to kind of really uh, investigate further together. And I think that's kind of the main thing that really connects us mm. is not as dancers or in unison, uh, even though that comes. It's just from like a deeper thing, and mm-hmm. then questioning that and going through the process together is something that um, works. I think so it's, it's more about having like a shared idea and and I guess really more specifically shared questions mm. is that you know you propose questions together and um yeah and that it's one of the something's really bonding about discovering something together and discovering mm. something about yourself with another person as they're discovering something about themselves you know and uh yeah that's really interesting i haven't heard it articulated quite that way but i think that's yeah that's really interesting having uh yeah discovering yeah having a having a shared question actually and how that can create a kind of a kind of a kind of unison and i and i think that does make sense now thinking about your work that it's it's not just as you say it's not just about unison of movement it's mm. about kind of a unison of mind, a, a unison of kind of shared experience and, and, and having a shared, n- not exactly the same, but a kind of a shared concern or a shared why a little bit, mm. you know, getting yeah. into kind of, as you say, the deeper bit, the, the why we're moving. Um, mm. And also, uh, I think it's something about like, also not even unison is the thing of um, understanding that we're different in ways and mm. how we so it for me as well when I'm setting tasks there's a sensitivity around okay this person's dealing with this a little bit actually this is a bit more fragile to that person or to this person how can I work with that and how different the relationship is to the theme itself and how we can use that to flourish in different ways so that the piece isn't like um it's funny because the blink is more about unison and coming together Mm. and finding that in in the actual piece and the choreography itself um but it's just it just feels right to me like to be like you're a person and you have this experience you're on stage as you like and I want you to be you on stage and Mm. I don't want you to try and 
layer something on of what you think this character I mean kind of like that that comes into you know different people's choreography and it's beautiful but sometimes I feel like it's easier for me to connect to you as a person and you're already yeah. so interesting um yeah. and let's let's work with that first you know and, and mm. keep that going um that dialogue it's and like what you said actually with sorry with um, with a cr- uh, conversation that you had with somebody one of the one of your guests on here actually um kind of speaking about what you bring to the character and trying and um, actually it was like when somebody sets the choreography and then you've got to go through the process of like okay so how does that make me feel and who am I here and and um, you know like it sometimes when it's set choreography you have to kind of mold it into your body um mm. whereas sometimes when it like you said like if it's a feeling it's a sensation like okay I, I can actually latch onto that how does that make me feel how then it kind of is a bit more of organic process in terms of embodiment mm. of that movement and what comes is your body speaking and not necessarily somebody else's moves and you're just trying to you know uh copy that in a way um so it's that it's your it's the thing that you were speaking about putting it out there what the feeling is finding um what that is for that person and now mm-hmm. can you go into movement with with that you know yeah and it's i think yeah it's getting into the why the why mm. a little bit i and i really like what you're talking about about it not being yeah in some ways you don't need a character because people are already so interesting and i think that's where the, the intimacy and the honesty comes through and what you put on on stage and what do you put in front of your audiences is and seeing pe- people move not like characters and then that feeling like a, a, another layer that you have to get behind to kind of get to get to the core of the dance mm. um and i think ultimately you know with w- you know with us n- now not having live performances and having more and more digital films like I've seen more dance in the last like year than I had like in the previous like 10 years you know and in some ways it's been you know although I do really miss live performance like I I think it's been helpful in the sense that I've been able to like see a lot more dance and Mm. it's helped me actually figure out more what I what like I like see in dance that goes like oh yeah that's it that's awesome or what I see with dance where I'm just like no and I find I have really quite like black and white experiences watching dance where often I'm either just like totally in trance and just like this is incredible Mm. um or I'm just like this is so like unabasingly boring like (laughs) why am I watching this and I find like for the most part what is makes a choreography successful in terms of like whether or not it holds my attention and it affects me on a, on a visceral level um, ultimately comes down to whether or not the, the why is there and whether or not I feel like mm. the people on stage know why they're dancing and why they're moving because, mm. um, you know, there's pieces I've seen with incredible movement and they know and like the why is there and it's amazing with those with really simple movement the why is there but then you know the the exact opposite you know like don't get me wrong I like you know I'm a dancer I love to see movement that's interesting organic new original all of that stuff but yeah um I get so bored looking at it if it's if if I'm watching it and, I, and I'm sort of going these dancers don't know why they're moving like what am I watching what are these people doing why are you here why are you dancing like um you know beyond like oh let's just create some movement together you know like I'm just like where where is it where's the the center of it um Mm. and I think when I when you don't always need to know what it is as an audience member Mm. you don't need to have those answers but you are keenly aware when those those answers or those questions are there in the process or they're not Mm. yeah 100% Mm. yeah it's true and I think it's I think it's something that will be an ongoing process which is really exciting I think you can never you know I'm saying all of these things but how I work and what I aim for but I you know there's challenges in that as well because you like as a dancer sometimes you can slip into a trained way of 
okay, I'm just going to do this and I'm not really thinking mm. about it, but I'm just doing it. And um, yeah, it's how you constantly question that why and integrate it into the movement itself and, and keep that process, you know, like keeping that, um, keeping that going and keeping that richness, especially mm. for stage work, right? Because it's a long process sometimes and um, it's not to drop that. Uh, but I feel exactly the same and it's not like you don't have to know you don't know why but it's like ah it's just something that's really like I find myself like leaning in like (laughs) on my chair like that's it ah there's something going like yeah it's really just um curious but not giving me all of the answers but there's something um yeah something to aim for as a as an artist I think and when you see dance like that, it's juicy. You're like, yeah, this is what we're here for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And when yeah. it's not, it's like, you just zone out, right? It's like, yeah. Uh, you can appreciate, but it's that, like, you're watching TV kind of thing. It's like, incredible dancers, incredible, incredible, incredible. But that's what I'm thinking. It's like, wow, mm, wow. You know, it's like very different sometimes. Maybe mm. it's just like, stylistically, but um, when I watch certain pieces, it's appreciating the physical form then and mm. that's beautiful but um yeah i find that harder as a pro um mm. so i don't know yeah and and don't get me wrong like yeah i'm not like anti-technical there is no. there is movement out there that you know pieces that i've seen that i think perfectly marry these things of being mm. both like you know high highly technical and also deeply deeply affecting and so I, yeah. it, it can be done it's not one at the expense of the other um but i think uh yeah yeah you're absolutely right um, if anything that's like a skill like that's even more of a skill sometimes is marrying the two yeah. um i think it part part of it for me is that i'm slightly out of touch of like a technical um my practice most days is improvisation and you know I, do, I go to contemporary classes but I, I don't really I try to move in a more organic kind of sense rather than find a technique so much sometimes I find that affects my choreography because I get a bit too boxed in mm-hmm. um, and if I'm trying to find something unique then I try not to do something like that for a while so that I can try and find new ways of approaching it so um, yeah I think that's why maybe my yeah i know what you mean otherwise you can get locked into like choreographing steps rather than like choreographing movement you know yeah 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 Yeah, Mm. exactly where can um where can people follow you and find out about what you're doing what you're up to um i think maybe instagram is the best place yeah um that's something that i keep kind of more purely for art um and that's at emily robinson dance um i'm also on facebook but that's kind of like my my facebook but i it's mostly for art and that's emily robinson and then i also have a website um which is emily robinson dance.com um yeah and that's probably the best kind of places so we'll drop that's all like, of that in the awesome. yeah we'll drop all of that in the description below so um yeah all you dancers listening can uh check that out and see what emily's up to is uh yeah she carries on with all this kind of interesting work and uh yeah i just want to thank you again for joining us on the podcast today and it's been really great having you on amazing thank you yeah thank you listeners we uh we'll see you next week